Um, so we will start with our normal kind of weekly rundown of what to expect. Areas of interest. Um, so quick kind of review of last week. Um, early week. It was a short week last week, right? So we're just going to be looking at Tuesday, Wednesday. We had balance put down close to our buy side demand zone under 49.60. Um, I just balanced really in this kind of like three week node. Hold this in. Um, and then NVIDIA ER was obviously our catalyst to push us up and away back to our top of range where we did not see the initi initiative sellers we saw in our last two tests, right? We tried two breakouts over this 44, 45 area, um, both failed. And then after NVIDIA ER as our catalyst, we were able to push through. Thursday, trend day. Friday, it's also a trend day, just more muted in terms of range um, and counter trend to the downside. We can say that we are continuing that trend with today with our lower high and lower low. Now, one thing before we kind of get into levels, um, the volume traded on this like Wednesday globex session and up through Thursday's open um, was quite muted, right? Th this um, structure is quite poor. Now, I I'm not too concerned with this gap. Still worth to watch, still worth to note um, and be aware of it. But because of all the past volume in this area, I'm more interested in looking if we can successfully support this breakout or if we see a breakout failure um, to then trade deeper into our pivots. If we do trade, end up trading deeper, yes, we can then, it will result most likely in the fill of the gap, um, but we have old levels in this area to kind of lean upon. Um, so I'm not, like I said, not super interested that the gap exists because of well-established pivots in the gap, but still worth noting. Um, for kind of levels for this week, so obviously Thursday um, and into Friday, we have this strong kind of selling node built out. Um, we saw rejections of our top edge uh, in the AM session and eventually in the afternoon session, right, we had the offer drop down into 90. This 90 becomes quite an important pivot on any retest if we can accept back into this upper node um, or if we continue to reject it. Now, like I said, structure above this breakout isn't great, but we do have two pretty significant nodes um, from Thursday's action to play off of. A few sign intraday ideas today. Um, as well as with six charts, right? We're at this kind of high edge um, in our mid 70s through 75, 76. This is your first kind of area of interest. We did get that test right after the close. Um, and obviously on the close, we saw large buy side absorption into this 80 edge. Um, the deepest for the kind of like this first, like really aggressive bullish move is going to be this low volume node. Um, that I want to see into 65 area and then 60 uh, being the primary test here. This is coincided with our previous aggressive sellers here. Um, so this is your first like, is the breakout strong? Do we have bids to support it? Um, this is that area of interest, right? Below that, it's, it's important to kind of look at some of these POC shifts so two weeks ago, we had our POC up here at 44. It was obviously a sell heavy POC um, with sellers being much more aggressive into it. We saw that in real time um, during these sessions, um, but obviously with the trade outs and the two failures on these breakouts, we know that this was our past seller value, right? And we've seen seller value make a significant shift up now. So this 44, becomes quite important to me on any looks in. Can buyers support this? If they can, we want to see a trade right back up into this upper node, into 90, um, and really see that buy-sided value move up. We have not seen a huge desire for what I would consider our higher time frame value on the buy side to really see that large shift. Last week, as we looked down further, this 79 
is the second kind of primary area. This was our POC last week over this Tuesday, Wednesday balance, which we obviously saw tests into our buying edge, right? Still establishing this as buyer value. Um, I want to see this move up, right? For buyer value for a big bullish move um, or continuation, you should say. Any failures into this 44 and we can assume that sell value is more willing to drop down then buy value is to look up. Uh, and then we get right back into kind of our multi-week range here. 13, 5013 is still worth noting. We saw very little reaction there last week with our push up. Um, we did on Tuesday, obviously, uh, seeing the offer drop into this area, but still worth noting if we get any other um, participants still willing to interact in this middle node with 13 being the same the primary look, but really on a loss of 44, I'm looking for this retrace through into last week, Tuesday, Wednesday, back into 79. This is, we for bulls, we, we really want to hold this 44. We really want to see this value shift. Buyers be willing to turn this past seller value into strong buyer value and support the breakout. Um, three failed breakouts of a range and I'm going to be more leaning for a structural shift um, and to kind of look a little bit deeper. If we can hold, obviously, then our trend is continuing and we have you know, accepted our breakout as valid. So just up here really quick, 90, right? Uh, mid 60s, um, I'm gonna say 65 on the low volume node. You can say 60 for this primary node we can look into 75, right? This area, it because we only had singular tests, it's hard to say like, this is where the buyers are going to be or the, where they're gonna try, rely on your intraday order flow, as well as Russell in the pivots in these areas to test the validity of buyers. But this being kind of your middle, oops, lower time frame pivot. Um, and then 44, main look, 13, secondary look, 79, main look. Now, any failures down under into 79 with lower highs, um, preferably into 13, below 44, somewhere in this primary node, we can look back into our established buy side value under 60. We know 37, 40 has been very, very reactive um, with our support and resistance flip. So I will actually zoom left. Um, if you can see this structure, let me zoom in actually so you can see it. Um, this kind of structure is what I'm looking for, right? Where we spend some time oscillating a range, fail to break out, full retrace, right? We get our breakout, we confirm it, and then we look higher, right? Subsequent t tests of this old seller value, confirming the shift in buyer value. This is the same shift I want to see occur here right, where we confirm this breakout um, and turn this into our buy-sided value. Any kind of overall questions on that for main targets? Um, once we start to push above and below, obviously some FIB extensions here. Um, as you guys know, it's quite difficult to set these uh, higher high targets. We need to rely on our names trading within structure um, and intraday order flow and levels to establish where sellers are interested in. Um, but if we can get this push up and over 30, uh, I do like looking into 50, 60 area, and then above that into this 95 to 5,200 area. Um, nice whole numbers as well. But that's kind of my view. Any questions on kind of our directional pathing for the week? I will quick go over the neutral pathing presented as well. Um, neutral pathing this week is quite bearish um, because what it will look like is just a return to our range, right? Where we hold buyer value down under 60 um, and sellers regain 50, 60 as their sell side at value. And this fails the breakout, right? So that's why it's quite bearish in nature. 
Let's see if we can put POC and balance back into this 13 area. So basically the same range we've been trading. Um, your halfway back for last week is in this 44 as well. So if a neutral week does play and we invalidate this halfway back, right, another kind of bearish point. So neutral is not really what you want to see. Um, it leans more bearish and I'll be more relying on if we get this move on the bearish path in. The only question is if we trade back through and don't reject this 13 um, or come back in and do this kind of thing, right? So not much to say on the neutral. It's more looking for directional moves this week, either back into range or accepting above. Uh, we'll really quick go take a look at the Russell. Obviously, Russell had some more strength today. There's three kind of primary zones um, to lean on. So this 2000 to 220, we saw a nice strong bid um, off of this 220 today. This was our old targets, remember from a couple of weeks ago, end of January, as well as mid-February um, off of our 27 buy. And this, once again, failed breakout, right? Failed breakout. We need to see this hold and push, right? And establish this buy side value to move up into where our pivot is. Sellers are very comfortable above 2050. Um, we can see that with our node structure as well. Very interested and eager to participate here. So for any upside looks, we need this 20 to hold supportive um, and to get up into 50 and start building. We do come back down under 2K um, we have pretty poor structure down below, and I would not be surprised on a full retrace um, back into close to our 60s, and then we look for buy side acceptance down there. So Russell is pretty straightforward with basically three zones, right? Where it's can we hold in this like 15 point range um, and look up, you know, 30 points into 2050 and hold, or do we reject this and look 30 points down? into 1960. Any questions on kind of Russell here? Um, you'll notice if you start trading the Russell more and getting more familiar with it that this is quite common. Um, it likes to oscillate um, and just establish these ranges and then we just wait for the move out and then check to see if we can confirm it or not. Much more range bound and mean reversion type of trading in this name. All right, any kind of questions on overview, pivot, structure, 